Hey guys, it's Jesse with CAD Dimensions. I'm on my way into work this morning and I decided to take a shortcut. And that got me to thinking. Shortcuts are great if you know where they are. But due to the nature of shortcuts, there can be a lot of them, they can be hard to find, and it's hard to tell if they're ever really gonna save you time. So this morning, I wanna talk about some shortcuts in SolidWorks Visualize. I've driven through the map of shortcuts and I use most of the shortcuts that are available in the software. And this morning, I wanna share five of my favorite shortcuts with you guys. These are the ones that I think have saved me the most time. I'm gonna give this video three stars and it's not necessarily for its difficulty, but it seems that you should probably have a decent handle on the software before you move into the shortcuts. That being said, they're very easy to use. So you can choose what level you want to rate this video. So once we get to the office, we'll take a look at some of these shortcuts and hopefully you'll find them as useful as I have. All right, well, here we are. Uh, this is the file that we'll be looking at today. You can go download this file over at GrabCAD. The link is below in the description and follow along with me if you want today. We'll be taking this file that's freshly imported from SolidWorks and turning it into something that looks like this with as little effort as humanly possible. So we'll be using our shortcuts in this case to get this done and the five shortcuts that we'll be working on today will be adjusting the focal length of our camera, uh, adjusting the look at point of our camera as well as smoothly dollying in and out we also want to copy and paste appearances quickly as well as rotate the environment. We'll throw in a couple extras just for fun, but those five are probably the specific visualized ones that I use the most. So again, this file is available if you want to follow along with me. So let's get going. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is to take this whole array and actually move it down a little bit. The way I've created these cords, they uh, extend past the bottom of this a little bit. And we can see that the shadows on the floor indicate that this whole uh, assembly is sort of lifted up off of the floor. So what we'll do to address this is you can either do this by eye or I just happen to know how far down it needs to come. Uh, select the assembly itself or the group of components. And from here you can adjust its location or of course you can use the object manipulation tools to move things up or down or wherever you need them to go. So we'll shift this down by a little bit. And my goal for this is to have those cords just kind of sink into the ground and just kind of disappear in the background. So that's what we're after. Now everything looks like it's kind of sitting on the floor. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll get this in position here. I want these cords kind of going out the back side of it. So we'll rotate this whole thing around and I'll just use my mouse to do that. So we'll spin this around to the opposite side. Now, as I'm spinning, you'll kind of no notice that we're rotating some somewhere about the sort of center of this grouping and we'll work on that in just a second. So we'll zoom in here. I'm just using my middle mouse button on the on my mouse scrolling in and out. The first thing that we want to do is adjust the focal length of our camera. Usually I'll try to get my camera somewhere close to where it's going to be finally set up so I can get some idea of what the image is going to actually look like as we're working through this. So to adjust the focal length of your camera without going fishing around in the camera settings, all you have to do is hold the Alt key down on the keyboard and use the scroll wheel just like we were a second ago for dollying the camera in and out. With the Alt key held, we'll see that we're adjusting the perspective of the image uh, by changing the focal length of the camera. So if we go over to the cameras tab on the right hand side here, we'll see that there's a couple of sliders for this focal length being one of them, perspective being the other, they're just kind of inverse of each other. And if we again hold our Alt key, you'll see the two of those moving together as I scroll my wheel. So somewhere around here is kind of what I'm looking Looking for I'm looking for the the one in the back to kind of fade off in the into the perspective there and that's kind of what I'm after so that looks pretty good now these aren't quite centered in here so I'm just gonna pan the whole thing over uh, to do that that's just the same as as SolidWorks so I haven't included that as a specific shortcut but just hold the control key down and hold your middle mouse down as you're moving your cursor so you'll see that the little hand will show up and that is your pan tool now, one thing as we're rotating this whole model around, we saw that the rotation point is kind of in the center. And sometimes that's pretty helpful and sometimes it isn't. Sometimes uh, when we've got an array like this where we have something kind of trailing off into the background or in the foreground, um, as we're moving things around, especially if the camera is up close, it's kind of odd for things to be flying back and forth in front of us. Um, now, SolidWorks has kind of an interactive algorithm that picks on where our mouse is and tries to adjust for that. But Visualize has kind of a different purpose in that we're 
we're uh, physically controlling where we want the camera and what we're focusing on. Um, however, we can easily adjust where that point is without, again, having to go into another camera and go into the camera settings. So if I wanted to rotate about this uh, lamp that's up here in the front, all we would have to do is hold our shift alt and our right click. Uh, now we can also use control, but my preference is shift. So let's see how this works. So if I hold shift alt and right click on this front little point up here, we see that nothing really happens or it doesn't look like anything happens. Uh, but now when I go to rotate, we see that I'm now rotating about that point or my camera is looking at that front lamp now. Again, if I wanted the opposite, say I wanted to rotate about this one in the back, same thing. We can hold shift, alt, right click on the back one, and now we're rotating about that lamp in the back. So we see that the, the lamps in the foreground are kind of moving in front of the camera as that goes along. So you can very quickly adjust what you're looking at uh, just with a quick swipe of the keyboard and the mouse. Now I mentioned that control works as well. So if you wanted to use control in place of shift, that will also center. I prefer it where it just leaves it as close as possible to where my camera is already set but we'll see that if I hold control alt and then my right click it will recenter so wherever I clicked it landed right kind of in the middle of the screen so uh, I prefer the shift but either way will work um, depending on what, whatever your preference is <clears throat> so shift alt and right click or control alt and right click will adjust what you're rotating about so I'm going to shift alt and right click about this front point here and then that will allow me to rotate kind of about that uh, front lamp Okay, now the next thing that I usually do is to get this kind of framed in place. Now usually that's a matter of panning the, the objects around or the camera around as well as zooming in and out, so the dolly in and out. Now the dolly we can use with our uh, middle mouse scroll wheel. So if I scroll in and scroll out, uh, that does the trick, but we kind of get this sort of snapping action where we have sort of two settings that we might, might wanna be in between. So rather than using the scroll wheel, uh, for the dolly in and out when it comes to the more sensitive setup uh, I will use the shift key on the keyboard and I'll hold down the middle mouse button instead of scrolling it So if we hold shift as well as the middle mouse button and we move our mouse forward and backwards We'll see that we have sort of a infinite resolution zoom if you will or a dolly in and out uh, That doesn't have that kind of stepping effect that the regular mouse control has So now we can use our pan with the middle mouse and then our shift with the middle mouse and we can very really quickly get things uh, centered up when, and uh, framed just the way that we want. All right, the next thing that we'll take a look at is copy and pasting uh, appearances. And I'm not really wild about the appearance that I have on these shades, so let's create a new one. So we'll come over to our libraries, and from our libraries, we'll hit our uh, appearances. So in the drop down, if yours isn't set to appearance, go ahead and set that to appearance. And from there, we'll go into fabric. Uh, so from fabric, I'll choose um, maybe just a soft fabric here, and I'll drag this onto the first one. Now again, this was set or imported as automatic. So as soon as I drag that appearance on we see that for this instance of it it has been switched to my soft fabric but the other four are still left with the original appearance that they had so I want to make some changes to this appearance so we'll move to the appearance tab and from there I'll choose my soft fabric and we'll make some changes um, to this particular instance so here I want to uh, adjust my transparency color I'd like to be able to see through this a little bit so I'll select on my transparency color and we'll move this about maybe 50% of the way up and from here, let's adjust the bump mapping a little bit just to make some changes. So let's tile this down to, I don't know, one. And we'll bump the bump strength up to maybe one as well. So make the bump a little bit more intense and a little bit bigger. Okay, so whatever changes that I would like to make, I now want the other four of these to share the appearance that I just created for this one. Now we could go in and find this, and sometimes we're right here manipulating this, but sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're just working in the graphics area and we see an appearance that we like and we want it to be somewhere else. So the way that this works is with our uh, appearance filter going here, I will hold shift on the keyboard and I will select the appearance that I want. So left click on the appearance that you want and then right click wherever else you want it. So I can right click my way right down the row and we see that the other four of these now accept the new appearance that I've just created. So hold shift, select the appearance that you want to copy and then you can just right click on everything you want to, uh, to adopt that new appearance. 
Okay, well this is coming along nicely. Um, we'll take a look at how the quality of these transparencies look when we switch over into accurate rendering mode. Um, I won't do that at the moment just so my computer doesn't start screaming away with the fan here, but um, we'll look at that in just a second. The next thing that we wanna do is swap out the background here, our environment. Uh, this flat gray is, is all right, but I think I want something with a little bit more contrast or a little bit darker uh, since we're kind of uh, creating an image of lighting. So I want a little bit more dramatic lighting. So let's switch back over to our libraries and from our libraries we'll pick a new uh, environment so from my drop downs I'll choose environment and in here I'll choose a new one that's got a little bit more contrast so let's go with the classic photo studio so we'll pull this in just drag and drop and we'll see that the environment updates. Now this is looking pretty cool, but this uh, hotspot in the environment is kind of obstructing where I, I have some lamps coming into that area. And furthermore, it's kind of backlighting things. So I'd rather have the light on sort of the front side of it. And to do that is a very simple procedure. All we have to do is rotate the environment around. And we can do that by coming up into our scenes and, and then finding the scenes in here and then going looking for rotation. But a lot of times I'm just working in the graphics area and I want to accelerate that process. And there's an awesome shortcut for doing that. All we have to do is hold down our control and alt key together and then move our, our drag our environment around. So control and alt held down together and I can drag this without having to go looking for the scenes tab or anything like that. I can just manipulate the environment directly, maybe to something like that. Okay, I kind of like that with the light sort of peeking off to the side so we get a little bit of gradient coming along from uh, each side and then the lighting is coming more uh, from that direction. So it's kind of catching the hi highlights on these round pieces. Okay, let's go swap our appearances for these guys. We don't want them all to be gold looking. So we'll go back to our libraries. We wanna create some variation here. So I'll go back to my appearances library. And from within here, we'll go into, uh, let's go into metal. And from metal, we'll pick some colors for these. So we'll go maybe a anodized red one. That looks kinda of cool. Um, let's go with a gun metal, maybe in the back. Brushed aluminum. Yeah, we'll go with um, we'll go with the precious metal. We'll go with a gold kind of on this front one, pretty similar to what it already is. And let's go with a ceramic of some kind, maybe a white ceramic on this one. Cool, okay, that's looking pretty neat. So I'm gonna switch over into my advanced rendering mode so I can kind of see what's going on here. Switch over to accurate mode here. And accurate will kick in in my graphics area we'll get a little bit better idea of what's going on. Now, most of the time I use fast rendering mode while I'm working along. Uh, in cases where you have um, emissive materials, or emissive appearances applied, uh, these transparencies and things like that, more complex rendering scenarios, uh, you will find benefit in switching over to accurate mode while you're setting things up, just so you have an idea of what's going on. So I have a better handle on what the light's actually doing through the, the shade and all of that uh, by switching into accurate rendering mode. Now, I'm finding this is looking just a little bit kind of flat. Everything looks kind of cool, but it's just a little bit flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bump the environment brightness up a little bit, give myself a little bit more more light in the environment. And I'm actually gonna step the gamma down a little bit to kind of intensify the look. So to do that, we can use our keyboard shortcuts as well. And these are a couple of ones that I threw in as kind of freebies. So if you hold the control key on your keyboard and you use the brackets, uh, left bracket will index your brightness down and right will index it up. So I'll use my right bracket. I'll index that up a couple times. We see the corner is getting a little bit of bright, a little bit more bright. There's the um, the overall brightness of the environment has been increased, and we'll step the gamma down by a notch. So to do that, it's the next set of keys down. So control and our semicolon, as well as the apostrophe. So I'll index this down by one notch. So I'll hit control and semicolon. And we can see that kind of intensifies the look. It's kind of like turning the contrast up. Cool, that's looking pretty neat. Let's go over to our appearances and from the white LED, I'm gonna turn the brightness of my bulbs up a little bit. And we'll just get a little bit more light interacting off of the, um, the lamp bases themselves as well as coming through the shade.
All right, well, those are five of my favorite shortcuts for SolidWorks Visualize. I hope they help you out as much as they've helped me. Don't forget that if you are looking for the shortcuts, F12 is a great one to know. If you hit F12 on your keyboard, that will bring up a little cheat sheet of the shortcuts available in Visualize, and you can look them up right there. Hopefully, by kind of following me along through this process, you've committed them to muscle memory a little bit better, and you'll remember them for quite a while. I find that when I'm able to just interactively work with the graphics area and not have to think about where all the tools are or go hunting for the settings, I'm much uh, I'm able to kind of immerse myself much better in the project, and I usually end up with better results. So good luck, have fun rendering, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.